Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is The Ramble and we're here until midnight Eastern Time. Uh, that's when we're live and uh, as we like to do at least once a week, we like to check in with an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the funniest men in the universe. <laughs> it, 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 now the pressure's on, isn't it, huh? Yeah, now, especially since three billion people are doing stand-up now. Larry Bubbles Brown. Well, that's not as bad as uh, the uh, podcast world in which there are like 300,000 podcasts. Oh, yeah. Strangers in the street. Hey, you want to do my podcast? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody goes, I started a podcast. I hear all these people on like MSNBC. I've got a podcast. Yeah, you and who else? You exactly. Know. There's a guy, but but the thing that happens is every year my audience gets smaller and smaller because there's so many people out there, you know, rambling around. So I don't know. I I give up. Yeah. Well, so hey, I would just say, you know, I like to think about anniversaries, and I was thinking uh, the last Friday of January of '87, I came back to New York to do a Letterman run-through, and you were broadcasting from, I don't know if you remember this, you were broadcasting from New York that week. Yeah, uh, which one? I guess we were at ABC, maybe? Yeah, yeah, was, and you had, uh, was Bob Guccione on? Bob Guccione Jr. Yeah, Jr., right, right. Jr., who got, his father was a real asshole. Uh, to him, uh, what what he did was um, uh, he I think he wouldn't invest in his venture that he wanted to start called Spin Magazine. You remember Spin Magazine? Yeah, yeah. And it actually became a very big, big magazine. Yeah, it was popular. Yeah. But Dad wouldn't finance it, so he did it all on his own and made it successful. And uh, he and Dad hardly ever talked. They had they hated each other. So. You know, but I think towards the end they had some kind of reconciliation, but that always happens. You know, you mm -hmm. can't you can't stay mad at your dad forever. You I know. guess not. You and know, and so. uh, y'all also on that show was uh, Wendy Will Wendy Williams. Wendy, yes, Wendy O Williams. O Williams, yeah. Let's not get, get the late Wendy O Williams, not the uh, not the talk show host. Oh my God, that show is. Talk about unwatchable, but <laughs> oh my God! Well, I, I get why she's popular. I just don't dig her that much. But now we have to say nice things about her because she's got Graves syndrome, and uh, she's in the hospital. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Well, so okay. Uh, we'll, we'll lay off. <laughs> so lay lay off Wendy okay. o, uh, Wendy Williams. Wendy O Williams was on that show. She was uh, she was nice to. I remember she was kind of cool. Well, you know, everybody her 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 image was uh taking chainsaws to cadillacs or something mm -hmm. you know uh but in real life she was one of the sweetest nicest most of, really just i loved her dearly i really did she just had such a nice aura about her and her her greatest pleasure was they lived up like in uh, upstate new york or maybe up in connecticut i can't remember she and uh, Rod Swenson, who was her, her Sven Gali and husband, and um, he, uh, the, she, she used to like nothing more than to go out into the woods and feed the animals. Now yeah. that that's so counter to that whole yeah. image of Wendy O. Williams, you know. Uh, and I. I I was driving after the show. I was driving out of the studio in a cab or something, and I see this really cute little woman walking down the street, and I look at her, and she's just adorable. And I realize it's Wendy. She, it's like this entirely different persona. I mean, if you can imagine Wendy O. Williams being cute, she was, mm -hmm. you know, 
And uh, I just I just adored her. I just thought she was the best, you know. And I had known them for a long time. I knew them back to the Midnight Blue days because Wendy and Rod were running sex shows on 42nd Street. And uh, they, were because they were making videos of, uh, of, of things like Wendy O and another woman uh, rolling around and having sex with each other in 100 pounds of peanut butter. <laughs> you know, and I realized, I said, to, I said to Rod one day, was I'm editing this stuff. You know, Rod, this is art. And he looked at me and went, no shit. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm bringing art to 42nd Street. I'm bringing it in a, in a, in a, in a form that those audiences can understand. And sure enough, all the stuff he was doing were these little art pieces, but with people fucking. And she was one of the people. In fact, I have a, I inherited some photographs, and one of the photographs I have is of Wendy o. Williams performing on stage naked on 42nd Street. Uh, and then they went out and started this this group called the Plasmatics, and went into into punk rock. And she became a sensation. And yeah, she was pretty big. At any time when anybody would bring up the porn stuff, they go, sure, we did that, you know, and because she had this reputation, nobody ever held it against her. So it fit in with the with the with what they thought of her. But she was just uh she was just uh, I thought she was just adorable. And I'm glad you felt the same way. You found that she was very nice. Yeah, she was really nice to me. Yeah. She's very nice to everybody. And mm -hmm. she wound up uh, committing suicide. She went out to the same area where she used to feed all the animals and took a gun and blew her brains out. Ugh. And um, uh, I came back to New York City to be uh, to give uh, a um, a eulogy at her at her memorial. They did at CBGB's, uh, and I gave a little speech about her and what I knew about her. And I think I said some of the things I just said to you that you know mm -hmm. counter to to her persona. This was a sweet, wonderful woman, uh, and it's true. It really was sweet and wonderful. But, and who else? Anybody else on that show that you remember? Nah. I think I think you might have had. It might have not been. Maybe it was that day. Uh, you had Dan Rather. That was at CBS. So where were we? Were we on Fifty Seventh Street, or were we on? Uh, um, West End Avenue. That's the question. West End. Yeah, West I remember End. That. that was. I ABC. walked over there. I was staying at the Blackstone Hotel, and I trudged over. So we. So it was. Uh, uh, you were not. Uh, you were not on Fifty Seventh Street then. Okay. Must well, then, be, that, I remember West End sounds very familiar. Well, then Dan Rather was one of the other times when we did it oh. out of the CBS studios in New York, and I think. I think that maybe you were the, here for that too, you know. So, uh, but you would remember more than I, because you have thirty-one a memory, years ago. You have a memory that won't let anything go. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> You've got so much stuff stuffed in that cranium of yours. It all stops at around ninety-five, though. It's a, it stops around after that is not. It, it really, I can't remember anything in the last really? fifteen years? How's your memory? Today, I mean, when it comes to, uh, like, I never, I see somebody on TV, I can't remember the name of the star. I just can't, you know. Uh, and, and it's like girlfriend and I, both in this um, pre-dementia state, saying to each other, isn't he the guy that was in that thing? Yeah, I have a lot of problems, and that's very uh, common. You start to lose, you can't remember names. Yeah. Well, I've always been terrible at names. Yeah, me too. You know. Oh, Really? Yeah. So, Mister 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 Rain Man here, who seems to be able to remember every name. Dates. In, the dates are more. I'm the, good on dates. You, the name's very, not you, horrible. You I'm, are very good on dates. Like for instance, when you came and did uh, my show out of ABC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the date? It was a uh, Thursday. It was the last Thursday of January of '87. So five. 26 was a Monday, 27, 20, it would have been in the 29th. The 29th, wow. Son of a bitch. I'm going to have to, uh, I, I don't know if I have any tapes of that. 
Uh, See if you can find that. And I because remember... if, I, if I had the tapes of it, I would have there would be a date on them. Uh, but let me let me see if I can find it. I don't I don't know that I've come across the tapes of New York yet. So well, that'd be great if you got them. I remember Guccione was talking about he is very worried about uh, censorship of uh, comedians and writers and everything. And yeah. And the, by, mostly because of the PC crap that was start, it was around then, and he was yeah. very worried about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and and uh, but it, he, I guess he didn't talk much about his father. No, I don't remember talking about that at all. Bob Guccione, best description I ever heard of Bob Guccione. Somebody said that Hugh Hefner came along, started Playboy, and showed you could have great literature, and then you could have naked women periodically throughout this great literature and it would sell. And Bob Guccione came along and proved you didn't need the literature. <laughs> <laughs> True. You know, so that 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 that, that was Guccione in a nutshell. Uh uh he took uh his greatest uh, thing was he did a uh, movie called Caligula. And it wasn't, of course, meant to be a porn film. But what he did is after the actors left, uh, he created these orgy scenes, hardcore orgy scenes, and threw them into the film. So it really became a very expensive porn film. And all the people who were in it went, well, gee, I... I didn't sign up for a porn film, and it was like John, <laughs> Malcolm McDowell, John Gielgud, you know, actors like that. I think, uh, I, I, I think uh, Helen Mirren, I think, was even in it. <laughs> and then when they left, they went and filmed all the porn scenes, and then they threw them in there, and then they threw cutaway shots of the actors looking at it, <laughs> you know. So anyway, it, it uh, uh, that that was Guccione's big movie uh, uh, thing, and it did okay. It actually made a lot of money for him. But uh, um, as the years went on, I think the magazine started to kind of flounder. And Playboy, where's Playboy today? Is it, it's still around? Is it still around? I thought they were going, or maybe they did away with their centerfolds. Was that? It? Yeah, but they're also they're online. I think. You know, so I I I really don't know uh, what's happened to Playboy. I don't see. I, in fact, do you? I when's the last time you saw a newsstand? You know, maybe you can go. Yeah, and, you see, uh, if you go into Safeway, though, there's a little rack that'll have a few yeah, magazines on it. Yeah, but what I'm asking is. Remember, on a corner, you, there would be newspapers and magazines and things like that. Where are those? Do they have them anymore? I, don't know, I think the Internet's killed that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, when I say I haven't seen a Playboy recently, it's because I don't think I bumped into any of these newsstands. I'm sure that if they, we still had newsstands, there would be one in my neighborhood, and I don't know if one in my neighborhood... But yes, you're right. You can go into like a, a drugstore or whatever, and they have some magazines on a rack, uh, and that uh, that seems to work out okay, you know. But uh, I love the old newsstand. Oh yeah, who doesn't? But uh, that's you and I, and that's not the kids today. The kids today <laughs> don't really give a crap about that. So you know. Whatever. I just had to put uh, 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 tissue in my nose because I started getting a bloody nose for no apparent reason. Must be my cancer. <laughs> Your cancer. <laughs> bloody uh, nose, first symptom. You know, years ago, I, I keep telling this story about little Richard, and he was supposed to do an interview with me. And I get a call. He can't do it. And uh, I, I said, why? He said, because he says he has a touch of the cancer. A <laughs> touch. <laughs> now, I've heard of a touch of the cold. <laughs> I've heard a touch of a lot of things, but I never heard of the term, the touch of the cancer. 
Oh, oh really? Just it, it, that's all that uh, that's happening is you just have a touch of the cancer. Well, that's good. That's nice to know. <laughs> I mean, ridiculous. Just ridiculous. So you, so you didn't get the interview on. No. So what I think I have now is a touch of the cancer. I think there actually is such a thing. Uh, <laughs> because what happened was, uh, 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 last time I talked to you, I guess I was going to have the test. And then I had the test, and the numbers went up on my PSA, and the free PSA was low, which is bad. Um, so uh, there's an, according to the results, there's an 85% chance I have cancer. Now, my doctor says, well, that's bullshit that they put that on there, on the results, he said, because, you know, you could either be lower than the, than the PSA number and your other number could be higher. You know, they change from PSA test to PSA test. Right. But he said, no problem. He says, if you have, uh, if we, you, we find out that you have cancer, it is, uh, uh, he says, I don't, he doesn't see it when he, uh, uses the finger and when he uses the uh, the little uh, 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 what do you, what do they call the thing when they uh, a woman tries to find out if she's pr what kind of, what the sex of the baby is uh, a sonogram he does a sonogram on mm -hmm. my prostate he doesn't see anything except except calcium deposits and uh, he says so I don't see anything but he said you know you could have a low uh, uh, flying cancer as it were. Uh, so I went, okay, well, he says, I said, what do we do for that if that's the case? He says, you come in every month, we give you a hormone shot, and that kills whatever growth there is in the prostate, and you keep doing that, and for 10, 15 years, you won't see anything growing, really, to any wow. great amount. So he said, it's, it's you know, it's kind of like there was this show called The Kaminsky Method, which I'm sure you don't have Netflix uh, but is very good with Alan Arkin and Michael Douglas. And uh, Danny DeVito plays a uh, urologist, and um, the line in it is Alan Alda says, he says, do you know of a good urologist? He says, there's no such thing as a good urologist. Everybody hates their urologist. <laughs> uh, but he says, I have one that's okay. So he sends them to Danny DeVito, and Danny DeVito says, well, we, we had, did the biopsy, uh, you, no, we're going to do a biopsy, and you can either have a snail. What was the second thing you mentioned? Uh, something or a rabbit. And and he said, which he says rabbits are really nice. They're furry and fluffy. He says no, but that's the one you don't want to get because that's the fast cancer. Uh -huh. He said, but if you get the snail, you just take care of it. You know, you just go on with your life. You know? In fact, most guys don't get PSA tests after the 75, and most guys, 70% of you out there, guys, will get prostate cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not the big C, it's the really tiny, insignificant C. So uh, he says, that's, if you have it, that's what you've got, and he said, you know, that's easily taken care of. You know, yeah. So. One shot. That's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Un unless my my unless my coverage only says two shots a year, and I got to pay for the other uh, ten, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll see. I'm sure my insurance takes care of that, you know. But uh, we, uh, you know. So I I have a touch of the cancer. I may have a touch. <laughs> I, well, I I don't know. I may have a touch of the cancer. Um, and uh, you know, it's nothing. But start the rumor, everybody. Alex has cancer. Would you just just so it gets out into the into the stratosphere, so those people who treated me like shit can feel bad. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, and it's Send good you money. <laughs> it's a good excuse for me because when girlfriend says, "Would you take out the garbage?" I say, "Well, nah, I've got cancer. I got a touch of the cancer. <laughs> I've got a touch of the cancer." <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! The great friend, so, so rich, little Richard, is credited with that phrase. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm little Richard. A touch. Yeah, yeah. So, what's new in the world of Larry? Well, I shouldn't ask. Nothing's happening, right? Nothing's happening. Although the Kaminsky met, I just uh, being a powerful member of the Screen Actors Guild, I actually got a, a cop. They just sent me a copy of that. So, oh, watch it! It's I terrific. It, it is terrific. In fact, I'm watching it a second time. 
it is that good. It's well written. It's well done. Uh, 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 Alan Arkin and, and Michael Douglas are f incredible together. Um, and um, you know, we had a big problem with the with the with uh, the Screen Actors Guild. Well, you're a member of SAG, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, good insurance. I, you know, I'm SAG as well. I'm SAG AFTRA. Um, you don't call it SAG anymore. It's SAG AFTRA. Um, yeah, they merged. And well, they I, we got in on their medical plan, their uh, senior medical plan, which takes care of uh, uh, the overage uh, from uh, Medicare. And it's terrific, and it's uh, it's available to you whether you've worked a lot or not. So, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So I could be a very, So how old yeah. are you now? You're. I'm on Medicare. So. You're on Medicare. Well, you yeah. know what I would do? I would check with um, I would check with uh, SAG. You know, you're probably paying a supplemental, right, to get a supplemental to take care of the other twenty percent, right? I'm not. No, I didn't. But uh, oh, I see. So you pay that other twenty percent out of your pocket. I pay the other. Yeah. Well, what I would do is I would get a hold of uh, uh, SAG AFTRA and and ask them about it. Uh, you can actually. I think there's a number for their health plan. Uh, yeah, I've got all that. Uh, yeah, right, check yeah. it out. Check it out. It, it's well worth it. It's well worth it. All those years of paying money into AFTRA. And not working under after finally paid off for me. <laughs> he got something out of it. Jeez, yeah. So you still a mem member of SAG? I am. Uh, I did a little thing last year. I had to re-sign up. So, well, what did you do last year? There's this little pilot they shot here that went nowhere. I had a little part in that. Oh, okay. All right. That's that's good. So uh, I get the screen. So I get the screen. They send you these uh, the SAG uh, SAG. What's the SAG awards? So. They send you yeah. all the movies for that because they want you to vote for them. So how much? Uh, yeah, well, I've i just voted last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, so you get all the movies, and I go on. Yeah, you, well, you I, should be getting the movies. Well, I go online to get the movies. Okay. They, they have a, a they have a service. They're sending me the disc where so. you can use your Apple TV, and you can actually go online and uh, and watch it. Um, that way well, um, well we know how good that would work with my technology well what, what's great about it is is that i don't like to sit there and watch a movie on a computer screen yeah i don't either right i like to lie there in bed and be there with the tv set and you know uh watch this whole thing uh, going on so anyway we we i vote we voted last night we went and made our choices and this year I got to tell you, some of the uh, some of the categories we didn't know who to vote for because they were all terrible. Um, I I can't remember what category we hit. I think it was oh yeah, it was best uh, uh, ensemble because there's a one category which is gives a prize to the entire cast. Mm -hmm. And it was like Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody. It was a bunch of films that really sucked. And I think we gave it to the one that was not the least bad, okay. But uh, um, we so we did our we did our voting because we watched all the films already, you know. Did but, you watch the marvelous Mrs. Although that M Mrs. Maisel is on Netflix, and we of course watched that. You you probably uh, got a copy of it, right? I watched. I heard good things about it. I watched the first episode. I didn't really do much for me really yeah why it just seemed like the dialogue was almost too cutesy and i don't know well, i like tony shalhoub but they only send you one episode yeah i only got one so far oh okay well it's really it's really it's really good i i so like good the show. okay I'll now this is next this one. is i guess the second season they sent you maybe or the first season i can't remember first or the first i liked it a lot but it's maybe it's too jewish for you Mm, I, don't know. I always felt Jewish. Could, so I, don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I always think of you as a raging gentile, but that's okay. Raging gentile. <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be a great name for an album. Raging, raging gentiles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh boy, I'm telling you. I'm telling. Hey, so, the, so I'll watch the Kaminsky. So that's good. Kaminsky method is terrific. It is terrific. I mean, it's just. It's got a lot of memorable lines. But my favorite was uh, Alan Alda's wife dies. That's no secret because she dies in the first episode. And uh, uh, 
they have the funeral, and then after the funeral, they have the, the, the food, serving food at his home and everything, and everybody's there. And the rabbi comes over and says, you know, you're supposed to put, uh, put, you're supposed to cover all the mirrors in the house. And, and Alan Alda says, well, I'm not that kind of Jew, all right? And the rabbi gives him a dirty look, and he says, well, I'm so sorry for your loss. And Alda looks at him and says, uh, try the shrimp. They're terrific. <laughs> <laughs> This is written by Chuck Lorre, who brought you Big Bang Theory. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Run out of time. Run out of time. Run out of time, but we'll talk to you next week. Time flies when you got a touch of the cancer. That's right. Thanks, Bubs. Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody. How are you? I just turned the light on. It says on the air, because if I don't do that, girlfriend, if she sees it, well, let me, give me a bad time. Well, listen, my mic now makes noise because I don't have it on tissue paper anymore. Ugh. Ah, the things I do for show business, right? Anyway. Hey, listen, before we uh, start off tonight with uh, maybe our, um, uh, some kind of um, uh, show here and go to our citizen panel, which, uh, let me do something here. Let me just bring up Skype so that I, I'm not going to turn it on yet, but let me just, uh, yeah, there we go. All right. So let me tell you what happened to me. The other day, we, the other day on uh, Saturday, uh, Marjorie remembered that we had a Broadway show to go to, uh, and uh, we had forgotten completely about it, and um, we considered for a brief moment not going because, you know, she's got a bad leg. And uh, then on top of that, uh, uh, she had the brain, the, the brain concussion. It turned out it really was a concussion. Uh, and uh, we, we, we decided to go to the theater anyway. And the, the show won the, won the Tony Award for Best Musical a few years back. And it was uh, called Dear uh, Evan, uh, what's the last name? I can't remember the title of it. But anyway, it was uh, it was good. It was okay. It's not my kind of musical, but it was good. And uh, we uh, we we were going to it, and I'm walking. We're walking through Times Square, which is just disgusting now. You know, all these lights that are just too bright. You know, it used to be the Great White Way. You know, the lights of Broadway, and what they were were things that neon that said you know little bulbs that said the Lyceum Theater and things like that, and it had a real gusto to it. Now it's just these big, huge, flat panels just blaring out. Just It's like daylight in the middle of Times Square. So anyway, I thought I would shoot a little bit of this so I could show you how terrible it looks. And while I'm shooting it, uh, something happened. Let me show you the video. This is turned into real shit shit. Used to be so wonderful. Now it's not. Here we go. Oh! 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 Okay. What happened? I fell. That's okay. It's alright. Okay? Oh yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. You okay? Yeah, Thank I'm fine. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, Thank you. And that, <laughs> that, that was what happened to me. How about that, huh, folks? Oh, uh, man. Uh, and uh, so you say, well, Alex, did you hurt yourself? And I, 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 nothing hurt, actually. I got up and I started walking and everything seemed to be fine. And uh, the next day, my heel is hurting me. And uh, my arm is hurting me. And so all the things that, and it's still aching. Right, and here it is Tuesday already. It's still aching. I didn't have any, you know, terrible, horrible, disgusting, vile thing happen to me, but I'm I'm beat up. So anyway, uh, but I'm alive, and I guess that's good. Okay, I guess that's we can call that a win. Uh, so 
but that, that in case you are listening to us on audio only, I, I took a really big plots in the. I, w- I really should have handed the uh, iPhone over to Marjorie and let her just show me. Uh, but um, I got a bruise on my knee, and then I, the next day the arm was aching, and I still my the heel of my foot is still. Uh, I think I bruised it. Uh, it doesn't look like it. You can't see anything. But it was uh, it was something else. It really was, and uh, uh, yeah, fuck. It, it just never gets better, you know. Uh, and then on top of that, you get maybe a touch of the cancer, and before you know it, uh, game over. All right. Anyway, but a gr- and then girlfriend today lost her wallet. Now that's the worst thing that can happen to you is losing your wallet. Not because you lost your wallet, but because you have to replace everything in that wallet. The credit cards, the, your, uh, your, and then there's always stuff you forgot. You know, then you, your driver's license. You already was able to get a temporary one uh, on uh, online, and uh, she has a passport, so she can use that as ID if she ever if she needs it. But she has to go get credit cards. And, and she's waiting a little bit because she wants to see if maybe it shows up, you know. She called all the various places she thought it might be, but it wasn't anywhere, so. Anyway, that was a really terrible thing for her. Anyway, the lines are open and nobody's calling, so am I going to sit here tonight and this is going to be the night nobody calls? Could be. Could be. Uh, my nose is dripping, uh, so I'm, I should probably blow it. Um, I've been spending all weekend with that new computer which i got on uh on uh came when it come it came uh last friday it was supposed to come tomorrow and it came last friday and it's really been working well here i'm gonna blow my nose so i'm gonna cut the mic here for a second oh. okay it's Brian Ludwig, ladies and gentlemen. See, already we, we get somebody. Uh, let me see here. Why are you... What is that? I have no idea what that is. Uh, hold on a second. Let me... Are you there? We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Wait a moment, he says. Okay. You know. Uh, let me see here. Uh, hello? Are you there? Are you going to talk to us? Uh, here comes Rob Alfano. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, 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 we can hear you now. Here comes Rob Alfano. Uh, Hello. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Rob. Hello. Hello there. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Um, I saw your spill. Wow. Did you just trip over like a curb or something? Uh, I don't know what I tripped over exactly. I think I did. I think what I did is I walked off the curb and it kind of like it made yeah. me unbalanced and I fell. And the yeah. phone dropped and everything, but it didn't break or anything. And uh, I didn't, uh, I, 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 you know, hit my knee and everything. But unlike girlfriend, I didn't break it. So, yeah. you know. Every, every time the computer restarts, my computer restarts, it always resets the Skype default to, to default communication device and not to my Yeti microphone. Yeah. So it's peculiar but at least it's something i know yeah. to expect yeah anyway hello rob hello how yeah. are you yeah not uh, too bad in fact you know what happens sometimes i uh, when uh, windows resets itself uh it screws up all my uh, inputs and outputs and everything but and, it, and much like a cock they want to ram down your throat or up your ass they want to they want you to take those updates sometimes well, no you're forced to take the updates that's what I mean. It's like a cock. They can't wait to jam up your ass, if whether you want to want them to or not. If, if you sign off, it just says update. You know, at least there's one thing about Apple. It does give you the option whether you want to update something or not. But with yeah, that, with Windows, okay. you have to update. That's it. You know, there's you know, and hey, you know, you bought their goddamn operating system. Shouldn't they be at your beck and call those fucking mother assholes lie? Hello, Phil. <laughs> Greetings. Are you someone? Yeah, they should be at my beck and call because I'm the customer. Yeah, yeah, but they don't give a shit at Microsoft. They never. They you don't... of all people on here know that, it, considering all the shit you're going through with Skype. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, so but uh, uh, you know, whatever. So mm. how you doing, it Phil? Is what it is. 
I'm doing all right. Uh, so you're in the uh, first stages of cancer. Uh, you start falling, uh, losing wallets, things like that. <laughs> oh, I didn't lose you know, the wallet. <laughs> I, I know, I know, but it was it was somebody it was close. near you loses a wallet. That's another <laughs> sign of cancer. Now, is this the second time, or was the other lost wallet yours? Well, I lo one day I it was a knock on the door, and it's a guy, and he said, "I found your wallet on the street," and I didn't even know right. it fell out of my pocket. Yeah, uh, and okay. he said, "I so, noticed that you lived right here, so I came up and I said, what apartment you lived at? So here I am to give you your wallet back.'" And I thanked him, and he left so fast I didn't even get to give him some money or something for it. Wow! But so that's the only time I've lost mine. But she, I think she lost hers once before too. You know, yeah. worst feeling, one of the worst feelings in the world, it, losing your wallet. Well, you know, that's why there should be. There should be some kind of service they have where if you lose your wallet, you have this insurance and they go out and they replace everything for you fast. You should be able to upload your driver's license and social security card into the cloud. Well, Marjorie got her driver's license. Oh, boy, license doesn't up. that sound a little bit dangerous? <laughs> well, Rob, look at it this way. We already are being tracked. So if they have some, uh, so if the government comes up with some proprietary algorithm with which to safeguard our information, um, it's just. Uh, different. It's 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 a different hat, but on the same head. Yeah, but uh, the fact is that uh, 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 we're you know we we have no real problem with uh, uh, with these things, except that what needs to happen is maybe something where uh, like she went online, she got her driver's license, or she got a temporary copy of her driver's license, so she needs to drive or something. She can use that. She can drive on that. Uh, all our insurance cards are also online, so we downloaded them all, and she cut them out of the piece of paper and put them in, uh, in the wallet she doesn't have yet. And uh, But now she's got to do the credit card thing, and that's what the pain in the ass is because she has, like, all her bills being paid by credit cards, you know, and by whatever. And uh, it's like when if my credit, if I lost my credit card, there'd be a lot of different things I would have to go to and remember each and every one of them. And you'll only, remember it when you get a bill <laughs> saying no, you haven't no, paid it, when you, when you, or when you get a thing saying your card isn't working. On well, that, we can agree. But you think you got everything, and then there's something you didn't get. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. I'm thinking about doing what you did or recommended that you you use PayPal to pay all the automatics and so you have one card so if something happens uh all you have to do is change which card pays the paypal bills well that uh, i, I yeah. use my checking account to do all that online banking so i don't use credit i try not to use credit cards for that stuff for uh, that purpose I, I want the i want the miles yeah i like oh, the miles okay. too yeah. yeah we're greedy for our miles yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, they always expire on me. I never, get, I never really wind up using them. You, you don't, uh, you don't fly once in a while. <laughs> fly twice, three times a year. Mine it's not enough yeah, to mine, really mine, get anything. Mine don't expire that much. Uh, uh, yeah, I like think American Airlines. Says... I, I, I've had it. I've had it expire on me there, and it pissed me off. And uh, I've had it expire on United because I stopped flying United. But I'm flying American, and. Uh, I've, I've been accumulating, I have their uh, executive card, which gives you the Admirals Club, as well as uh, miles and uh, early boardings. So, you know, I, I'm trying to, you know, get it up to maybe 100, 150,000 miles I so have, I can go I to have, Australia. I have 250,000. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I have a uh, United card, uh, and everything I buy on that card goes towards the miles yeah every dollar a mile yeah well i don't yeah. know if every dollar is a mile sometimes it's more than a dollar they give you but uh 250 000 mm -hmm. miles you're probably able to go first class europe for two people round trip probably probably yeah and we're thinking of using those eventually once we decide to travel but we're too old to travel yeah, <laughs> but, you, but you want them miles? Can you sell them? Yeah. No, I don't think so. You're, you're too old to. With them. Yeah, you can sell miles, but uh, you're too old to walk, not travel. <laughs> oh, the name of the show, the Broadway show, is Dear Evan Hansen. I think it was called. Uh, and uh, it, it's amazing what they charge for a Broadway show ticket now. 
Oh yeah. But if you think about she paid, it, you've she got paid musicians and actors, and well, she paid one hundred and ninety dollars a ticket. And I'm and I say the same thing you say. You've got musicians, and you've got the the crew and the cast and everything. Yeah. And then it's a big deal. Uh, well, the cast here was only seven or eight people, and the orchestra was only like about five or six people. <laughs> yeah, but they you got so, the lighting people. You got the venue. I think it's I worth mean, it. I mean, it's. I yeah, think it's I, worth but it. But I think for one hundred ninety dollars a person, I think I'd like a full sized orchestra. Okay. All right. <laughs> Or, or uh, uh, sometimes they have half an orchestra and the other half is pre-recorded. Yeah, that, you know, that, you Jersey, like that. Jersey Boys is going to be coming to my area, or it just came to my area. Good. Is that worth seeing? Uh, no? I, I, I don't, did Marjorie like it or didn't she like it? It's what we call in in New York, since you don't live here anymore. Uh, we call that a a, a, a a bridge and tunnel show. Mm. You know, it's one of those concepts that makes the tourist want to go to it. You know, so I saw the movie. I didn't care for it. Uh, well, that was uh, that was that was a movie, not of the stage play, I don't think, or the musical. Uh, but it was I an adaptation of the of the of the stage play. Also, but also, I don't like those musicals where they take music that already exists like uh, uh, Slayton took us to see Beautiful the Carol King musical so, oh yeah so there really what you've got is somebody doing a tribute to Carol <laughs> King and, so it's like and, a Vegas act but huh? no, yeah nobody's writing any original music you know it, it and you I, I'd like a musical where there are original songs and things like that you know it makes life worthwhile one of the last one of the last can write anything anymore. Yeah, yeah. One of the last shows I saw was uh, Starlight Express. Oh, God. You remember that one where oh, they, where God. they I, uh, rollerbladed or roller skated into the audience? Yeah. Oh and... God! I'll, I'll say it again. Oh my fucking God! <laughs> yeah, nobody can do it like a steam train. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you didn't like that one, huh? N uh, no, I, uh, I didn't want to see it. The whole oh. concept it sounded so stupid to me. Oh, it was, it was good. The music was good. And, and to me, the heyday of Broadway is over. The day Broadway's over. The, he I, I, the heyday, the, the heyday. heyday. Yeah, um, you know, they, they just there's no more. There's no more Rodgers and Hammerstein, Rodgers and Hart. Uh, uh, who are the other big ones who do the Broadway shows today? It's a lot of, you know, their revivals and and things like Jersey Boys and Beautiful by Carol King and all that. Yeah, all that kind of bullshit. Well, the, I'll tell you, the one yeah. show we saw a couple of years ago that I really liked was uh, when things were rotten. Uh, and it, it's a musical about the invention of the musical. It's this guy who's the, uh, who, who, uh, lives in Shakespeare's time and he Shakespeare's, uh, he considers Shakespeare like <laughs> this guy who's got everything and he wants it too. And so why do, somebody says, why don't we write a play, but everybody sings all the words, you know? And so it's a, it's a funny, very funny. It was very funny comedy sounds like a bar mitzvah it was a great show great show <laughs> um so i loved it uh but anyway so and then we saw the steer heaven hansen and it it, it it's a it's an interesting show the storyline is original and interesting uh but the i kept saying to marjorie i said do you think we're gonna hum any of these songs when we leave the theater because yeah. none of them were memorable at all. And then I said to yeah. her, you know, come to think of it, they all sound like the same song being sung over and over again. You know, but it, it, uh, it, it there was something about it that was, I, I'll tell you, it was very good. The staging was terrific. Um, but, and it was a very good musical, but not my kind of musical. And so there what kind what's what do you consider like fiddler or no, west no, side I, I story like, I like or... stuff like when things were rotten I liked uh, book of mormon you know things that have a sense of humor about them I also mm -hmm. saw what was the one about the uh, girl uh oh what's the name of it now um it it it's um it's based on I think a Raoul Dahl book if I'm not mistaken um, and, and her name starts with an M. I'm trying to remember the name of the show. And I love that show. That show was terrific. See, I can't even remember the name of it. Uh, Marjorie, if you're listening to this, uh, call me and wake me up and tell me what the show was, will you? <laughs> yeah, sure. 
Because she'll be listening to this tomorrow. I, it, yeah, what was it? It wasn't Madeline. It was, oh, God, what was what was the name of it? <laughs> Fuck. Well, somebody, any Broadway maven out there who can tell me what the name of the show was, but it was really good. It's really My granddaughter good. would know. Yeah, it was really good. Um, you know, I, but, you know, it's funny. I For all the time I lived in New York, I, I didn't go to Broadway shows that often. Yeah. But I tell you what I did to David Feldman once. Uh, oh, David, I come back from New York, having spent a, a week in New York on vacation. And I come back. And he said, did you go to see any Broadway shows? And I went, no. He said, you went to New York and you didn't go to see any Broadway shows. How can you go to New York and not see Broadway shows? And now for the next month, he's berating me for having gone to New York and not seen any Broadway shows. Did you ask him if he saw any? Well, he, oh, yeah, of course. He goes to Broadway and he sees the shows. So about a year later, I go to New York. And we're, I think, at the, uh, at the Carnegie Delicatessen. And as we're walking out, I notice that on the ground is this playbill. Because, you know, in the, the theaters, uh, the, you're handed a playbill with the picture, you know, the artwork for the show. And then inside it tells, you know, who's in the show and everything like that. And I said to my friend Steve, who was alive at the time, I said, where could we get more of these? I, oh, it was on the bathroom of the, of the Carnegie that I found this thing, okay? He said, well, the shows are breaking up right now. The clo everybody's leaving. They're probably littered all over the place. So we went down and, um, on Broadway into, all, and into Theater Row, and sure enough, mm -hmm. it was the ground was littered with these playbills. So we pick up about 20 of these things. And so I put them in my suitcase, and I bring them back to San Francisco, and I have Feldman on the show. And the first thing he says to me is, so you went to New York. Did you see any Broadway shows? And I take out these 20 playbills, and I plop them on the table and say, <coughs> there. And he actually Very thought nice. I had gone to see all of them. So. The, the place to go to, everybody says, is to London. Yes, that's, I was thinking that yeah, myself. Yeah, it's they, supposed to be that, very good. That's where I saw Starlight Express. Uh, <laughs> well, you went to I'm, London and saw the worst musical. Uh, it wasn't bad. I liked it. It's another. It's a what's his name? Uh, mm -hmm. The guy I can't stand. Uh, did Phantom of the Opera and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, what's his name? Uh, uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein. No, no. no. Uh, uh, the guy with three, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't like his stuff. You know, it's really. Yeah. But he he, you know, um, he he did uh, he did Starlight Express. I believe that was his. Yeah. So. Whatever. You know. It was nice. Yeah, I'm sure. I I'll, like. I'll, I'll trust you. <laughs> I'll trust you for Broadway theater, oh. Phil. Oh yeah. Well, no, it was in uh, London. We have Snyder doing movie reviews. Would you like to do theater reviews on the Gabnet? Uh, yeah, I'd have to go to a couple of plays. Yeah, you'd have to. Yeah. You could uh, you could submit the. Submit the bills to Gabnet. You can write them all. Bill. Yeah, I could. Yeah. I could give them the playbill. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> Let me just for a moment tell you that when you pay a hundred and ninety dollars for a seat, that seat should be, by virtue of a hundred and ninety dollars, one thing if it is nothing more. And what is that, gentlemen? Comfortable. Comfortable. <laughs> Broad. You know what I'm talking about, right, Jeff? You could. Yep. I've Terrible. gotten. I've gotten leg room and uh, ass room. I, and, I've gotten yeah. cramps in my legs from sitting. Yep. You know why they do that? So you won't fall asleep. I saw <laughs> Madame Butterfly in Australia at the Sydney Opera House. Why do I believe you? You want to talk about uncomfortable seats? These these were like sitting on concrete uh, bleachers, and it was it was awful. I remember mm. Book of Mormon when we went to see it. It's a fairly long show, and by the end of the third act, m literally, I was cramping. I had to stand up, and people were going, "Sit down, sit down. We can't see the show." I'm going, "I'm cramp. I have to. I have to stand on my foot." You know, I mean, th that's how bad those seats were. Now I've been in some other theaters where the seats are really nice. Some of the newer, some theater, of the newer ones. Yeah. yeah. Is there a Ford theater or something like that? Yeah, Lincoln um, used to go there. 
No, no, no. There's a theater. There's a theater in New York. Um, I thought it was it was named after a car. I thought, but uh, I was very surprised because typically the old theaters, mm -hmm. I think they're built for a time when people were just smaller. I don't think so. I I, I think that they were not made comfortable because the comfort was not important because they were selling tickets so cheaply and they just wanted to fill, fill, fit as many people as possible into those theaters. And you're right, they were a little smaller. People were a little smaller. But these seats are just, I mean, the ones in this theater the other night, dear Evan Hansen, were just ghastly. It's terrible. So bad. And now, are they protected by, uh, you know, by the... the uh, Preservation societies, these places well, that they can't really upgrade well, them. Well, they could upgrade the seats. Preservation doesn't, you know, preservation only uh, ex the extends exterior the, exterior, of the building exterior of the building. Like we're ah. we're a landmark building here, but that's the exterior. The interior, the, even the courtyard, they could do anything they wanted to with. It's not. It's not landmark. Uh, it's not protected by the landmark. So, uh, you know, seats in a theater uh, don't come under yeah. that. That's true. The Ed Sullivan Theater has been redone, at, like, what, any number of times. It's a landmark. For many shows. Yeah. But uh, I, I used to, when I before I used the CPAP machine, I used to fall asleep in the theater and snore. And uh, people would complain. I would, too. <laughs> at 190 bucks a ticket, you goddamn right I would complain. Uh, and I, I snore like, uh, like, like I have megaphones, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been snoring the last couple of nights, which is yeah. something I haven't done since I lost weight. So I worry that I'm... Eating, eating stuff you shouldn't? No. No. I'm probably eating less. And I'm still, you know... Tell you what happened to me last night. Uh, you you have a Mac, right, Rob? Yep. You have a Mac, right, Phil? Do you have a Mac, Jeff? Yep. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Brian's the only one with a PC, right, Brian? Correct. I have an iPhone, but it's an iPhone success. It's old. So here's now. what I did with the new machine. They're right? good. Uh, I hooked it up to my old uh, my old uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, backup drive, yeah. right? Uh, to get it start working. And I went to the backup drive and I looked and I saw that my old um, Mac Mini had a file in a folder in there. So I said, I don't need that anymore. And I dropped it into the waste basket. All right. Well, I went to. Nice that you can recover from that. Uh, huh? <laughs> you can recover from a Mac waste basket. It, 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 not, not totally. Let me tell you what happened. So yeah. then I go and I, I decide I want to clean out the. the Waste basket because I like to keep my waste baskets clean, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm the same. You know, and since I'm also my main drive is an SST or what SSD or whatever they yeah. call them, so I don't want to use up as much space as possible. I've already used up a a, a, a hundred and fifty gigs. All right, you know, I don't want to use a lot of it, so I get rid of stuff when it's in the garbage can. Well, I went to go clear out the garbage can and it goes deleting one file deleting two files now it's up to deleting a hundred thousand files now it's oh, up to deleting two hundred thousand files by the time it hit five hundred thousand uh, i decided to go to bed what happened was is i suppose the backup drive had an inordinate amount of of, of files and it had to go through each and every one of them and get rid of them uh, and finally, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I went in and looked there, and it had finally cleared itself out. But it oh. must have taken four or five hours for the waste paper basket, or the yeah, you know, the waste basket to uh, to what clean itself out. What crap did you have on your backup drive? Well, it's just just the backup files, because every every hour it goes and backs up, and then it uh, after it, 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 what can happen is you can have like five hundred thousand files as part of that backup. So I didn't realize that that's what happened. So now I'm never going to do that again. If I get a new machine and I want to use the backup drive, I'm just going to reformat the backup drive and, you know, not have to spend hours upon hours watching this thing going. I mean, over I hit over 500,000 files it was deleting. So you like your Mac Pro, huh? I love the Mac Pro. <laughs> I love it so much that this machine, which is my Mac Pro, which I have always liked and I always considered my power machine, feels weak and sluggish mm -hmm. by comparison. 
it, it, the, it is just, it is m amazing what, what 12 cores will do. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, having that much memory headroom and so on. I, and, and the, uh, uh, the s you know the ssd or what do they call that drive the ssd yeah ssd yeah uh if, it, if you decide, I, I have something like final cut pro and it just starts up like that you if know? you decide to uh take your 64 uh mega memory out and get one and upgrade it to 128 i'll buy your 64 because i only have 16 Oh well, I I don't think I want to upgrade to it. I don't care. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, I, you you were saying you might, uh, that you could. I could. You know, all I have yeah. to do is pull it out and put the new ones in. But I have to buy right. them first. You know, and 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 Which, the 64, does that require you to do that, or can you buy the extra sixty four to go to one twenty eight? Is there an uh, no? There's slot? only so many slots. I, I think there's only okay. one, well, two slots, or one slot, Boy, that, or whatever. I hate to see what the bill for that would be. Uh, at it's Newegg. Not, it's uh, for the sixty-four. It was five hundred and twenty-five dollars. Wow, that much? Yeah. Huh. Last time I looked, that might have been six months ago. But it was. Yeah, you know, you you know, you're in for a thousand bucks easy for one hundred and twenty-eight gig of RAM. Yeah. Easy, yeah. but it's more. Yeah, yeah. Because the chips are going to be double in size. Well, I let me see. I'm trying to think. Uh, mine. In, in here, I have 32 gigs of RAM, uh, but I have about eight slots that are filled up to do that. And uh, I don't know how much they they cost me. I don't think they were that much each. You know, they, they were. That's they, that's different because you're you you have addition. You have eight <laughs> slots. Are there eight slots on the? Uh, no. On the new one, I no, don't think so. No. It's different. I, I, I open the back, and I think there may be two, and it's it's that you have to get two of them in order to make. Yeah, it. yeah. So that takes the the the, the size of the chip yeah. that gets exponentially more expensive. Yeah. So you're going to have two 64 gig chips to make 128 gig. Those are going to be some serious chips. But, well, I like uh, having the 64 gigabyte uh, uh, headroom is fine for me. You know, I, yeah, uh, that's more than I'll ever use. And, you know, uh, the only problem that I have is that, as I say, I try to not use the flash drive as much as possible. And so when I go into something like Final Cut Pro, I have to tell it that I don't want it to put the files on the flash drive. I want them to put it on the, you know, well, on I, the I only uh put on the flash uh the operating system and the programs that makes and then, no sense what do you mean that make, it makes no sense to me because you're manipulating and working with the with the uh i would use the workspace in other words if i'm working on a specific movie or a file you're going to get the benefit of having the speed of the solid state on whatever it you want to whatever you render I, I i have uh, the drobo which has a solid state drive turbo uh, drive in it to uh to make the oh five, okay eight. i got you so you so, you are working on a solid state drive then otherwise right. you're 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 doing all this work and you're rendering this file on the slow disk right because i have a i'll tell you though I, I find i find that the uh, three o's are very fast they run as fast as my internals on the Mac Pro. I see. I see. As long as you're, well, yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, with I'm using Thunderbolt, uh, so my drives are Thunderbolt drives. Well, good for you. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I just put and my how my long NAS up be, on eBay. Yeah, how long will it be, Alex, until you get a Drobo? I don't want a Drobo. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Rob, you put your NAS up for. Yep. Uh, you don't yep. like it? Uh, too no, loud? I don't like it. It's too loud. The company won't replace it. They said they were going to. They asked me to send them a recording of the hum. Mm -hmm. And they responded back saying that that's kind of normal. And uh, it, dro it drives me crazy having that thing humming while I'm in my office working. Wow. And I just, I, and I don't want it, it, I don't want yeah. it in my theater because I think it's too, I don't like the hum. And so... I put it up on eBay tonight. If, uh, in fact, you, 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 don't don't like, you don't like your QNAP, but I like mine, and mine is quiet. Except you have no hum, nothing. I All I have is the clacking of the hard drives. Wow. Like, See, I have this or, constant mm, It's yeah, like a no, hum. No, I don't have that. As a matter of fact, the only problem I had tonight is I was going down, I was fixing some wires, and it kept unplugging 
the uh, the QNAP. And so I finally figured out that I hadn't had it had as a block where you put the the thing in, and it wasn't all the way seated in, so it was kind of going on and off. And Rob, every, and every time it has to reboot, it takes like five minutes. You know, if this, yeah, if this thing time. if this thing is going um, uh, you might want to say namaste, and yeah. maybe it'll stop. I knew you were going <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah, he was going somewhere. Hey, by the yeah. way, if uh, if Kevin, oh, if funny, Kevin is uh, is li- if Kevin is listening, thank you, I'm Kevin, kidding. for writing and asking about <laughs> how how good I feel or don't feel uh, from that fall that I put up on the uh, on the internet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I saw you went down like a ton of bricks. Yeah, I certainly did. I went down. You know, so uh, the uh, the Bennett family seems to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking it on the sidewalk quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said, something similar on your profile, Alex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Less than a month ago, your, or like two months ago, your wife had something similar happen to her and now this. Yeah. Yeah. So. so did you see the tourist that pushed you, Alex, or was it Marjorie? No, there was no tourist that pushed me. <laughs> you know, it was the yeah. sidewalk. That damn sidewalk went and pushed him down. Right. Uh, jumped up in front of him. Yeah. 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 So I, I, no, it wasn't a tourist. I, I was lucky that it wasn't a tourist. So, you know. It, 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 and it was a mugger. Right. It was a mugger. Anyway. So anyway. Uh, but thanks to uh, Kevin for, you know, asking about me. Mm-hmm. 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 What is that? Hmm? What? what is that? What? Some sort oh, of light LED? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. What the hell is that? It's Halloween. Hmm? No. I have to start it up again. It's a little, uh, see those little lights there? And I... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Where the hell did a, you get that? Huh? It's a flasher. Huh? Where the well, hell did you get flasher. that? Uh, what happened was um, uh, Albert used to like to go to this store that was near where the TV studio was, where we used to do the show from. And uh, he uh, he he uh, w- we would go in and buy little ga- gadgets, like he'd be having a party, so he wanted to have it for everybody, you know. For all his friends and so on, so uh, I uh, I said okay, um, what do we want? And he found these things, and we bought a bunch of them. I this one is not a good one though. The other one was better; it fit in my mouth better. Uh, so you know, you know, have you ever seen people wear those Bubba teeth? Bubba teeth? They're uh, they they're like that, except they they look like uh, snackle puss, and uh, yeah. they're called Bubba teeth. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you know where to get them? Uh, uh, uh-uh. uh. Hmm. Well, anyway, anyway, oh well, forget it. I just thought I would do it. But and every dentist I know, I want them. I ask them, "Can you make me a, a set of fangs? You know, like I, a Dracula fangs?" I and, have them. Uh, They're oh, awesome. you do? Yeah. Yep. Well, did you have them made for you, or uh, no. did you buy them on, online? I'll hmm? show you them if I can find them here. Well, here's they're, the, they're not yeah, Halloween. Those those are great. This right? is my other favorite thing. This is uh, Super Bowl. Uh, the, the Super Bowl that that I got that um, uh, if you uh, if you bounce it right. Now, yeah. Let me turn my camera on so people can see it. <laughs> Look at what it does. No battery. Huh? Do you no know I have had this since I'd say 1998. And it still works. Uh, so I, I and guess it was, Tesla it was, was from, right. It was from some kind of trade show. Yeah. And people were fighting to get these things. Because they also, they, you know, because they're, uh, they're like Super Bowls, they bounce really high, too. And every time you bounce them, the light goes on. And here it is, what, how many, tw- almost 20 years later, and this thing is still uh, lighting up. So I, I, you know, and I can't even see if there's a battery in there or whatever, but it, uh, it can't be a battery in there. It's gotta be it, something it, else. Yeah. Yeah. It has to work like those flashlights that you shake. Uh, you think and, so? And, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. what do they call like kinetic energy or something? Yeah. 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 Oh, here we go. Here, here's, uh, here's, uh, Rob with his fangs. Let me, uh, let me, <laughs> let me. very nice. There we go. 
There he is. Oh, those are those nice. are great. Thing. Yeah. Yep. They're like real teeth, and it's only two caps that go on my incisors. Yeah. And you, what well, you? This was I got it at a a mail order um, uh, Halloween place, and basically they lock in pretty good. And basically, what they are? Oh, here we go. Basically, what they are is they're molded to your teeth. You put this stuff in them, mm -hmm. and then you you put it right on your tooth, mm -hmm. and it molds right on the. Mm -hmm. And then and they stay. Oh, I wow. I ate with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Wow, wow. Whoa! I can always tell it's Ray Renati at the gym. Hey, uh, it's just me. Basically, I can tell it because we hear the the air conditioner in the gym because that fan. No, those overhead. are the bikes. Those yeah, those are like all the machines whizzing. Uh, I'm really? gonna turn. I'm gonna turn the sound off. Hello. You know, Hello. I'm, I'm wondering why, and I've never been able to figure this out, why they didn't um, uh, take those um, uh, uh, those bikes and hook them up to generators so that they're producing electrical energy while you people are working out. <clears throat> wow. I think you just thought of an incredible, uh, you know, startup. Who knows? Maybe they are doing that. Somewhere, probably. You know. You can uh, run a few light bulbs. Because if you're going to go into a place like that and act like a gerbil, we may as well treat you like one. You know, <laughs> you know uh, when they about had... The gerbils, Brian might get excited. When they had that <laughs> Occupy Oakland, uh, I, I went to the Occupy area where they were uh, had all the tents, and I was doing... Coming from Occupy. someone who has yet to use the shower in the gym. Yeah. I, well, I was using, I, I was doing some photography, and they had a bicycle there that people could generate electricity. So, uh, you know, it was, it was just a, like a regular bicycle, but it was hooked up to uh, something that would generate some electricity. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to quit my uh, my uh, my job uh, as a. Uh, uh, in the in the military service, because now I can't wear a dress any longer. Uh, you know. Well, uh, what's there? Four hundred transgender uh, people in the military, and they military had to pay for their uh, their sex change issues. No. no. They didn't, uh, have, to well, pay. They didn't uh, have to pay for their sex change. Well, why did they uh, uh, not allow them to be in the uh, military? I thought that's what Trump said. No, is they, that, they uh, allowed them to be in the military. They didn't allow them to exercise their sex, sexual choice. In other words, uh, to grow long hair, dress as a female uh, soldier. Uh, there's a term for it. What? There's a term for it. For what they're... You're, they're not saying transgendered aren't allowed... There's a term for the specific um, uh, affliction. I don't know. That, that's not the right word. I'm trying choice. to think of the. No, again, it's not a choice. I mean, nobody chooses that. But there's a uh, a name for it. I heard it today, and I, for the life of me, can't remember what it's called. But there's a name for it. I think it's he mm -hmm. she's. Amaphrodite. <laughs> no, it, 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 we haven't heard that term in years. Um, he she's. Yeah, right. Yeah. He she. Yeah. I'm looking for it. I'm trying to find the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian seems to. Yeah, Brian. Seems to... All kidding aside, I know you're you're you know, jostling with that remark of yours, Alex and Rob and all that. But um, last time I checked, those who were transgendered, male to female, female to male, weren't wearing. Anything other than what was expected of them to uniform wise. Well, no, no, you're, ta you're talking about people who had gone through the sex change. Correct. Okay. Or even those who haven't, but, but still but identify Probably as the someone opposite. who had gone through the sex change wasn't going to wind up in the military. I mean, it, it just would be too difficult. All right. Didn't uh, Bruce Jenner volunteer? No, here it is a good example with Bruce Jenner. I mean, Bruce Jenner is not a sex change, Bruce Jenner simply decides to dress as a, as a woman. And to live his life as a woman. I thought Caitlyn Jenner I, already went through the surgery. Oh, no. No, 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 no. 
How'd she get those tits? But nevertheless, she still she still identifies as a she. She still identifies herself as Caitlyn. So she is Caitlyn. She is no longer Bruce. Right, but she is has not. She is not. Um, uh, uh, what can we call it? Uh, uh, anatomically, all she hasn't lost her uh, yeah. uh, her junk. Yeah. yeah. So the term that there uh, is called a, a condition known as gender dysphoria. But there's another. You know, you call your car, Most a lot of guys refer to their cars with uh, feminine pronouns. Right. So just because she doesn't fit, Caitlin, I mean, doesn't fit the prototypical, doesn't fit the uh, archetypal uh, definition of a full-fledged female, doesn't, she, doesn't mean, doesn't invalidate that she's a female. She is a female. She thinks she is. Well, uh, uh, we're going to have to distinguish here uh, between biological and 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 right. uh, and um, uh, what you believe yourself to feel comfortable being. Okay, psychological. <laughs> it, it's it, some some people used to describe it as a being a woman trapped in a man's body. Okay, yeah. uh, and, and then and there I, are people who are born with both. Uh, with both, well, with both equipment or with varying. Well, well, that, you look at Chaz Bono. Chaz Bono made the made the switch. Right? No, the, there no, are many no, nuances absolutely in, that, not. in that community. Absolutely, many, not. Many Chaz nuances. Bono is still uh, a, a, a female a gender wise. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I saw an interview with her with him, and yeah. he said that he decided he wasn't going to get the uh, gender reassignment, as it was, as it's called sometimes. Uh, because um, uh, he just didn't think he was ready for that, but that he was living his life as a man, uh, but that he still had the equipment of a female. So, uh, yes, Ray. You. Sorry, I just turned off my mic. Um, yeah. I, I just want to say I have a very good friend, and uh, he, he was going to go on a Broadway tour as a man, and he just couldn't take it anymore. I mean, he was like, it, he had always felt like he was not a man. So he just he just became a woman. And it ruined his career. But, I mean, he feels like, she feels like uh, she's herself now. I mean, it, it, to say these people make a choice and all this, it's, I guess he he did make a choice. But he made a choice to finally be uh, made a hard happier. Choice. Yeah, it was brutal. Yeah, I'll tell yeah. you that right now. Who would willingly choose? Years, to right. Like that. Took right. him years to deal with it. So, and, then, and I would imagine with all the drugs and everything, there there's all sorts of side effects and things that they have. To, Absolutely. Have to well, they manage yeah. it pretty well, though. I mean, they go really slow. But Not do really. they even really know what the real long-term effects of all those hormones are? No, but but the thing yeah. is, is like you know, it's you only live a short, you know, a certain a amount of time point. anyway. You might as well make the most out of it. Yeah, they have also a valid point. See, Alex, yeah. if you become a woman, they'll give you the hormones so that you wouldn't have uh, prostate cancer. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I just wanted to make one other addendum to that. To say nothing of those who can't get the surgery because they can't afford it, because they're poor or lower income. Mm -hmm. I forgot to add that. I thought that was a factor to take into consideration as well, talking point wise. Yeah, uh, it's a. Uh, I'll tell you, it's it. Unfortunately, it's a subject that is not going to get. How do I put this? It's not going to get a lot of sympathy from the average unfortunately. American. Unfortunately, well, uh, well, well, no, you well, say unfortunately, but you know, I mean, they don't. You don't feel. Uh, comfortable. Keep them separate, Phil. Some people don't feel comfortable with the subject matter, uh, and I'm I, I can't. If they're bashing I, them, no, they should no, feel no, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not talking about. It. Let's say they do not lie. They cannot get with the concept. Okay, they can't get okay. with the concept. That's for start. They better get on board. Well, no. Let me finish. You can't. They can't get with the concept, and so therefore do. Uh, but they don't do anything to make, to make those people feel uncomfortable. They just don't get into the concept. Yeah. So in that case, are we to sit around and, uh, and, and you know, make uh, light of them or call them nasty names because they, are, uh, uh, because they don't agree with that particular lifestyle? As long as they don't impinge on that person having that lifestyle. You get what I'm saying? 
It's one thing to make remarks about people you know and are good friends with if they happen to be trans or if they happen to be gay or if they happen to be of a different race than you, so on and so forth, different economic class, because you know each other and you can you can rib each other like that. But uh, otherwise, no, it's not acceptable. Not at all. Well, I had a friend. Uh, Where did it go from uh, 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 the uh, medical treatments to acceptability? Uh, you know, the I thought... For instance, that's why I asked, what, what do they do in prisons? You know, uh, do the medical facilities in the prison uh, uh, pay for the transgender? Let's say they started the, uh, to, to become transgender uh, and physically. What are you and, so worried uh, about the government paying for the operations for? Why does this seem to be a sticking point with you? Uh, because this is why the Supreme Court, I understood. No, no, that wasn't that, the reason why at all. Well, that's that's what I heard in the news is that uh, that it was cited as the medical cost. No, and I'm, no. The, 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 and to begin with, the Supreme Court is not going to make any judgment based on cost or on medical costs or whatever. They just did it because they 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 felt they didn't. It was they they didn't want to rule on it during this court period. Is what really happened. Yeah, they're going to revisit it. Yeah. If if Congress doesn't, Phil's looking it up to see that uh, we're they said not, they're going to revisit it in 2020, spring yeah. 2020, yeah. Which, right during the election. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hopefully, when he's also, when his fat ass is on his way out. Also, the military um, stands up for their own. So, when, and the whole thing when you're in the military, whatever medical si situation you have, they, they 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 stick together and they give it to you when you're in actual. Uh, yeah, when you're actually serving, but I mean, the, that's you know, just the, the, way it the, is. the Supreme Court and it's not was. that many people. The cost is negligible. Four hundred, I think. <laughs> what? No, no, but the, no, but some of them were already. But some some of them were already in. It's like if if they find out when they're in that they can't live that way, then the then that's the sticking point. But it's, it's such a small number of people. It's negligible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a negligible uh, amount. When you're talking about two thousand people in the military, you're talking about a just. A, a piss in the in the bucket, you know. Yeah, but yeah. here's but here's a thought about when you t think about the financial part of this is if it becomes the the norm to uh, for the for the military to offer the surgery, then you're going to have people join the military for one purpose and one purpose only. Yeah, but they yeah. didn't. I don't think anybody was offering them the operation. They weren't. You know, that was not. Gender reassignment was not something the government necessarily had to pay the money for. It was not what we would call a, uh, if, if the person has cancer, it's a medical treatment that's immediately needed. I think in this case, they feel this is, an, this is optional surgery. All right? That's what I think. Uh, and, and to get America to look at it in any other way, I mean, I think that if somebody wants to live his life as a woman, wants to do the Caitlyn Jenner thing and be in the military, I think that should be allowed. And that's what's not being allowed here. That's what the problem is. But so, I agree. So, I mean, if someone's willing to go out there and fight for us and die and shoot the gun and do whatever they can, I don't care how they dress. Exactly. I mean, who gives a shit? Exactly. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know. Excuse me, I need uh, to blow my nose. Oh boy, I've got a bloody nose all day. What is that? You know, well, I give well. up. Anyway, um, uh, but it's it's you know. So I mean, I, we'll, we'll see what happens. But it it's it it certainly is going to make once again uncomfortable for a whole group of people who are getting used to being comfortable. <laughs> you know, and and it's also a matter. Thanks to of, Trump, the divisive son of a bitch that he is. And it plays to his base, right? It plays to the religious right. Yeah. Well, I, I saw on CNN right. today, they played a, a, a video of him saying how he was going to back the LGBTQ uh, group um, completely in his presidency. There were, there were like three or four times he said it explicitly in the campaign. He also well, said Mexico so, was going to pay for a border wall, too. But right, it, exactly. It, it says here, the CNN deal, the says service gun. members diagnosed with gender dysphoria after joining the military can stay in the military if they don't require a change of gender and remain deployable. Yeah. Uh, so what they're saying is they don't want the burden of... of uh, of having to pay for it. That's what it yeah. sounds like. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Let me read a little further. Well, uh, <laughs> It's a long article. Yeah, and you read slowly. Anyway, uh, and your lips move while you're reading, too. Did you know that? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it, it, uh, it, it, what the hell? You know, uh, I just, uh, here's a story that I, I don't know how I feel about it. And I don't know, I've watched it over and over and over again, and I can't come to a, this whole story. Oh, there's. They're they're saying that if they want to start the uh, transition, was I talking? And they, and, they, and, they, and they'll be out for more than twelve months. Was I talking? Then they're not yet? deployable. Yeah. Huh? Can I can I talk? I was said uh, starting to talk about something, and you interrupted me. Oh uh, well, I did a good job of interrupting. Them. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> That's your M.O. Uh, tell me where I'm wrong on this thing. Have you seen the, the videos of this Indian and uh, MAGA hat wearing yep. the, yes. uh, the confrontation? You yeah. know, if you look at that, it, it, there are two ways of looking at that story. You can't, it, 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 it just because the guy was staring at the Indian didn't mean he was disrespecting him. I mean, I don't see what other people are seeing in that, and I think they're making a bigger deal out of this than need to be made. If you saw the two-hour tape, which they talked about, I haven't seen it, it shows that there was no disrespect. You know, just like in any photography, I can, I can highlight what I want people to see. Well, everything's and, within the frame, is the, and nobody sees well, what's outside no, the frame. Yeah, but the, what, what uh, it took yeah. place prior to the one to the, shot that they showed of that kid staring down the, uh, the Indian or the Native American, uh, it was, um, uh, I couldn't figure out what the kid was doing, whether he was awed at what the guy was doing with his singing or whether he was making fun of him. I couldn't tell. Yes, Ray. It wasn't just him. It was all the people in the background doing faux, faux Indian chanting and laughing and making fun of the Indians. I, I didn't think. Uh, that, I, I didn't. No, see, they, I, didn't they, see, they I didn't see them laughing. I saw them kind of like getting in. It, it, you could say they were getting into the spirit of what the guy was doing. Yeah, well, well, they were it, probably it was like, drunk in the first place. It sounded like also, it was an Atlanta was, Braves game. I heard. Well, the, I heard the American Indian guy interviewed. He said there were two groups of people. They were about yeah. to fight. Mm -hmm. There was yep. an African American group of people, and these they were Catholic called white the kids. no, they were black, they, they were they Hebrew were more, Israelis, yeah. black, yeah, Israelis. yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they got and they got and he and so it, in a way, it just everything got provoked because he tried to make peace. The Indian, I guess. Put, well, the Native and American, there was already, I keep calling them Indians. It's wrong of me. Native uh, American, Native, Native tried American to make peace. put himself in between them to try and make peace. Yeah. But yeah. I don't see where these kids were necessarily uh, uh, in the face of this uh, Native American. It almost looked like they were enjoying what he was doing. He was I mean, there are two ways. Yeah, from, yeah. Then there's yeah. another, there are other videos of it that seem to point that out. It's hard to tell. From I just I feel that this story is kind it's of tell, yeah. it's kind of a non-story. And I don't know. When, when, I, when I look at it, I think that kid is in his personal space. It just doesn't look like he's enjoying it. He 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 was so close to him, and it was that's what the to me what but, looked confrontational. But, was the guy yeah, was with like the drum inches. close to the kid? The, the, you know, the, guy with the, the guy with the drum actually got in the face of the kid. Yes. 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 Because he so, was putting himself inches away from the leader's face. No, it was the other way around. It's hard to really tell. And oh, I think okay. what, I'm say, what I'm saying is, is that here is this video, and they take this video and they put it on television, and then they interpret what's happening as they want yeah, to see can't. it, as, the, as they the want to see it. At but at all the time, well, let me finish. Every time I've watched that video, I see a different thing, depending on how I want to parse that video. Yes. Exactly. I think it's yes. one of those things where you had to be there to know. Yes, the bro. people at the school wanted to condemn those kids right off the bat. So it was kind of like a, uh, a, a, uh, they were too quick to, uh, to condemn. And, and get the full story. Which one? Well, uh, Brian's got yeah. his hand up. Brian? Fake news. Okay. I have a slightly different take on this that slightly deviates from the narrative here in that I believe that uh, whether it's to advance a left-wing cause or a right-wing cause, uh, portraying matter, minors and blowing them up 
on all kinds of media outlets is a no-no, or at least I believe it should be construed as such. I say this in regards to uh, uh, snarky memes that have also been made of, uh, uh, of people like Baron Trump, in addition to, in the past, to use history, uh, Chelsea Clinton. Yeah. So, well, you, 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 th- you, you know, think, they have a hard enough you, time as it you, is. You think that these kids, no matter what they were doing, should not have been put on television doing this Unless because they're of doing their age. something criminal and illegal. Uh, I no, I don't think they should be. Well, I mean, for, all I'm saying is that what what I saw is they put this video on the air, and it's kind of like a Rorschach. You can see anything in it that you want to. Uh, and and one time I watch it, and I go, the kid is kind of. If you look at the kid, he almost looks like he's amazed at this this chanting. That this it almost looks to me on a personal note that he has he, a smug look on his face. Much he, like he was interviewed, not Brett Kavanaugh, but nevertheless, he, he is a minor. No, he he was interviewed, and he said that he didn't want to create a uh, a scene, and that he was just going to sit there, watch what was going on, and and smile. From what I understand, and, they've been expelled as well, haven't they? Well, no, uh, not anymore. Punishment. I don't think. But uh, see, what was happening for an hour or so prior, this uh, very militant group called the uh, Black uh, Hebrew Israelites uh, uh, were were calling these kids with the MAGA hats. It isn't Hebrew uh, Israelites, it's Hebrew Christians or something. No, 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 it's Israelites. Uh, 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 Black Hebrew Israelites. Now, I don't think they have anything to do with Israel, but uh, they're uh, and they've been around for a long, long time. Uh, But um, what happened was they were uh, giving all sorts of expletives at the group of uh, Christian kids in in the uh, in the mega hats. They so, were saying a lot of wacky stuff about like to begin with, babies they of incest and they were yeah, they, they were calling they were, them they, they were calling them every name under the sun. They, and they didn't wait, react Hold to on it. a second. They weren't Christian kids. They were Catholic kids. They yeah, same yeah. thing. No, you know, no, not the same thing. Yeah, you know, when when they confess, they they do the same thing. <laughs> I'm Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Catholics are Christians. Well, I, I don't yeah. I don't usually call them Christians. They're Christians are like all the other guys, you know, the Lutherans. Oh, I know what the, you mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, oh, the Catholics the are the elite ones. The cat. No, the Catholics have their own dogma. You know. You're talking about the difference between Catholicism and Protestantism. Exactly. Yeah, I would consider yeah. the Protestants Christians. I would consider the Catholics Catholics. You know. So. Yeah. And they all started out as Jews. Eventually, at one point. Uh, but uh, all I'm saying is is that uh, um, uh, these kids, uh, you know, I mean, whatever went on there, it's being interpreted in all the wrong ways. Everybody's taking advantage of the situation to inter- and it's like a, it's like a, it, it's like a Rorschach test. You know, what do you yeah. see in this thing? You know, and then uh, somebody goes, oh, it's terrible what that kid's doing. You know, those kids should be banned from school and blah, blah, blah. And well, then, I think you, you're you an editor, Alex. You know what you can do with video. You you know that you can take a piece of video and make it look any way you want. That's what that's the, the art of editing video, right? Yeah. You can take a scene. If you, t- if you showed the raw footage, it would look one way. You can then cut that video to make it show any point of view you want. I mean, that's we, the, the art of it. We, and we as Americans need to begin to realize that we, we don't even know why these kids are wearing the MAGA hats. They may have been doing that as a put on. No, they were there over so. some sort of abortion uh, issue. Wasn't it the Women's March uh, that no. was taking place at the same time? I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, but uh, Ray, uh, there's you know why the Jews created uh, uh, Christians? So there'd be oh, somebody to buy, somebody to pay retail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably true. Yeah. Well, that's an yeah, I think we're always getting it wholesale. Nothing like I good anti-Semitic humor highly, here on the on the program. That's good. I think it was just a highly charged situation, and everybody was kind of yeah. on edge. And to just put it all on on the kids is a mistake. And like you said, I mean, you can edit video any way you want. Now, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I have a couple of things here that I wanted to get to. Number one is uh, we have yet another uh, woman who has entered the race for president. 
Uh, and of all the women involved, she's the only one that I can kind of even get behind on any level, and that's Kamala Harris. Get behind her in what way? Uh, any way she'll let me. her down? Actually, but no, she, um, you know, I, you know I hate Kirsten Gillibrand because of what she did mm -hmm. to Al Franken. Uh, and I absolutely uh, 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 abhor, uh, what's her name, Pocahontas. Uh, yeah. Oh, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. I just find she's just gotten to the point where it's like, are you really running for president? Do you think this is the way you do it? I you also know. have other news, but presidential run-wise. But wait a minute, uh, let me finish. Let me finish. But Kamala Harris, I saw the other day, and I kind of, I kind of liked her. I, 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 you know, I mean, she's only been in the Senate for two years, uh, but uh, mm. she. Um, she has, there are things you got to have in order to run for president. And one of them these days is nobody knows who the fuck you are. And the reason for that is you don't have this record. Like I can sit here and say, I hate, uh, I don't like Elizabeth Warren because, because she has a record. And I don't like um, Kirsten Gillibrand because of what she did to Al Franken. She has a record. But Kamala Harris is so new. And attractive. Kamala Harris. Well, let me finish. Will you let me finish? Will you let me she's, finish, she's Phil? Phil, will you let me finish? She's not a nutcase. Yeah. No, uh, she's not. And she's a left-wing nutcase, and she will not translate across this country. Maybe in California they'll vote. Maybe in California they'd vote for her, but uh, and New York, but the rest of the country, she can she can well, write that Well, the fact off. the fact that you hate Phil. her that much is is enough for me to vote for her. Yes, Brian. Phil, yeah. Phil you think I'm. Right. Okay. Uh, my defense, not that it's much of one. When you were paused there, I thought you were finished talking, but uh, I, I apologize. Anyhow, he does uh, that. Gay. Uh, it's it's Pete uh, Buttigieg uh, from. I guess he's from uh, uh, South Bend, Indiana. He's a uh, South Bend uh, mayor. He's openly gay, and he's thrown his hat in the ring apparently for 2020 really? for the Democratic nomination. All right. Well, good. You know. Uh, you know, we will have a gay president. Uh, we will have a gay black president. Uh, we will have a uh, any number of different presidents before we ever have a Jewish president. That's right. That's why. Do you saying. really believe that? Yes. Oh yeah. They'll never yes. vote for a Jew. Or you know what? They'll vote for a Jew over an atheist. Well, Bernie Sanders, uh, but uh, he he's just as he's um, a big a nutcase as uh, Ocasio an and. Uh, oh, I love and, Ocasio. Uh, I, you know, she. Oh, I, I thought you would. Oh, Andy I think Slander she's here. terrific. I think she is Another wonderful. Another socialist. Uh, no, the yeah. fact that she pisses you off says everything about how good she is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, Ray. Ray was. Uh, Phil, I think I'm a nutcase. I'm pretty sure I'm a nutcase. Yeah. I think. Hey, I think we I all are. <laughs> 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 you know. Okay. I just wanted to let you know, just in case you didn't. Well, the only thing I heard about Kamala Harris that, that irked me a little bit is I heard that she might have had a, a real, should we say, a relationship with uh, Willie Brown. Willie Brown. And she did have a relationship with Willie Brown. Who's that? Uh, uh, Kamala Harris. Former mayor. Uh, no, who's Billy Brown? Willie, Willie Brown. He was the uh, California Assembly Speaker and the mayor of San Francisco uh, and uh, a power broker in California. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so and an attorney, yeah. But uh, EFD, yeah. big fucking deal. Well, he he was uh, very very powerful in California politics, and he was banging, so, uh, it was banging Camilla Harris, and uh, he pronounced uh, Camilla. basically it's pronounced huh? ca it's pronounced Camilla. Yeah, Camilla. So he was uh, banging Camilla Harris, and what else? And, and and that's how she sort of rose up to uh, prominence in San Francisco politics. Not the worst and, thing someone's done. So what? what the well, fuck? and then you know the other thing with her is that she refuses to seek the death penalty when she was DA. Uh, yeah. Pros uh, uh, she As do I. She refuses to seek the death penalty on any cop killers. Well, I agree. And, uh, I, I agree. A person, I agree. Zero one percent of the time can be convicted wrongfully then See, uh, I, yeah I, I don't believe I don't believe in the death penalty Phil but I do feel that if somebody kills a cop that cop has more to protect him than I do no nah, he has nah, guns he has two-way radios he has a cop car he so, has all so these it's, things. it's okay to kill he uh, talk show hosts because they got a microphone they could throw at him right 
That you know, and that's, no, that's no, hey, I'm, uh, all that's, I'm saying is you guys, you guys say, oh, well, they killed a cop. Hey, hey man, Phil, he killed he's... somebody at least who was carrying a uh, he was carrying a gun, and he he had a two way radio and it's, a bulletproof it's a job. vest. His life should not have to be sacrificed well, for him doing why his should, job. Why is my life any like less? You. Why is my life any less important? It is uh, not any less important. Yes, he's it is. There doing a service. Well, for you took the job. People like you, you, so you, you took the one job. time. I agree with Phil actually because this guy has a gun, right? Like you said, he's got all those tools, but he also puts himself in harm's way where I don't, and I don't carry the gun and all that. I put so myself I in harm's way. I live in I, Harlem. And yeah. that's a gentrified area. You know, you would think that that's like midtown. Wait a minute, Jeff, mm -hmm. you, you have your hand up. Yeah, I think there's other people who have uh, risky jobs that that are not policemen, that they, that don't work for and the And do government. you think that if somebody kills a fireman in the, in, while he's conducting his, his duties or an EMT, that uh, they should be uh, protected uh, with the death penalty so that they could do their jobs and, and have less hindrance? Uh, well, I don't, I don't disagree. I don't agree with. Uh, no, I'm totally against the death penalty. I have an, I I'm against the death I have an argument. Too. I just want to. Yeah. Report. Yes. OK. Um, knowing fully well that uh, there are always case. There's always been cases of innocent people who have been executed mm -hmm. on the converse. Those who have been caught red handed in the act. I would believe, in spite of the fact that they are taking our tax dollars and shit, but uh, there are fates worse than death, like not being allowed to be put down for many years while in a little box in solitary confinement mm -hmm. before you expire. That, to me, is a punishment worse than death, and that is what they deserve. Okay. All right. Yes. Hello, Bree. How are you? Oh, look at him. He's, he's at work. Yeah, he's got, uh, is that work where you're at? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you look so professorial today. Jeez almighty. I know. Huh? And it's Sorry. early. It's early in the morning for him to yeah. you know to have his tie all the way up. And that's not that's not I want to rub your head. Either. That's not a clip on. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a clip on. <clears throat> but uh yeah, I've been going through this week. I have a chipped tooth. Oh. And uh I'm going to get it done tomorrow cuz my I lecture Sunday through Wednesday, mm -hmm. and so it's a you know it's going to be a pretty big deal. I won't be able to talk, so I'm doing it uh, tomorrow. But uh, I went and saw three dentists for it last month. I had a had to get a fixed tooth up here, mm -hmm. and I believe that this one caused this one. You know, yeah, like it that's changed the bite. Times happens. So I went back to the original dentist because it, it was an emergency thing on a Friday. But she's too expensive. I don't get a discount. But it was a Friday. So I went back to her to ask her about it, and she uh, uh, she gave me a couple of options, but it, and then she charged me a lot, <laughs> and then I said, no, no, I'll be going to the neighborhood dentist who gives me a hey, discount. Bob just went to the dentist. Show Bree your teeth. Uh, ah, I put them away. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yes, fans. <laughs> <laughs> Well, today, uh, the uh, Academy of uh, Motion Picture Arts and Sciences uh, bestowed upon us their latest group of uh, nominees for awards here in the... No, thanks. And I voted my... I, we did our SAG Awards yesterday, Marjorie and I. We, uh, what, did, what did you vote for? I voted, let's see, Best Actress, Melissa McCarthy... Uh, a, a best actor, who did we do? Um, um, I can't remember now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, we have oh. uh, we have here the Academy Awards, and um, if it if a sh picture had the name Black in it, this was the year to get nominated, uh, because uh, Black Panther and Black Klansman are both uh, nominated for a best picture. Uh, neither of which comes close to anything that I would say was a best picture. All right. Uh, I thought you said uh, what was a green room or uh, what, well, was, well, what was well, that, that phrase second. thing? I'm, I'm going to finish. What? I'm going to finish. Oh. Bohemian Rhapsody. Trump is going to do his State of the Union in front of his rally crowd. What? Did you read that? No. Did you talk I, about that? I don't know, but you're changing the subject here. Sorry. What, yeah, just, uh, what is I'm, it? I'm just waking up here. He's gonna do. He's gonna do his State of the Union in front of those kids. 
<laughs> I think He's so. talking about doing it in a rally. One of the, like, down in Alabama or something. Oh, jeez. Doing the yeah. State of the Union address. I won't even watch it. I wouldn't entertain oh, that. Fuck right. no. I didn't watch the last State of the Union. I sure as shit won't it, watch this one. Anyway, I didn't even watch the joint session of Congress. Oh, well, forget it. I won't even talk about the movies. Nobody cares. Sorry. Nobody no, cares. What, what was the one with the driver and the black the entertainer? Green Book. Green Book. Green Book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, th- that didn't that didn't get anything? Yeah, it got or? nominated for Best oh. Picture. And uh, Viggo Mortensen for Best Lead Actor and for Best Supporting <laughs> Actor, uh, Maharsha, Maharsha, Maharsha Ali. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they got, uh, they got nominated. Uh, we also got, let's see, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, neither of which I liked, Green Book, which I liked, Roma, which I think is terrific, wonderful, yeah. Star is Born, which I, I is... Bohemian, I like Bohemian Rhapsody. You did, Really? Yeah, I did actually. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any of them. And yeah, Vice, I mean, most of them which I is seen. terrible. Uh, but Roma is, I think, uh, a Green Book of Roma. I would love to see. I would be happy winning. Yes, Ray. Hey, I have all the DVDs like sitting on my counter. Is it too late to vote? Uh, you know? No, you, the voting is on. Uh, 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 you have to vote by Friday, I think. Okay. Because the right. the Thanks. awards are on Sunday. And, uh, it, you know, like I have an Apple TV, so I just watch the things online. Uh, I mean, to vote for SAG, is it too late to vote for yeah, SAG? Yeah, but they have an app. They have an app for the SAG films. Uh, oh, okay. So you can watch them on your TV set if you have, a, if you have a, an Apple TV. No, I have. I mean, they send me all the DVDs because I'm in SAG. They don't I was send, wondering if it was too late they don't to send vote. All of the D, they don't sell, send all of the DVDs because I didn't. No, I, I know. I didn't get all. They didn't, well, you can get online. Yeah. Get online. Yeah. Now, but Larry Brown, vote. Larry Brown said that he got the DVDs, but did he not watch them because he needs VHS? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Super right. 8, I think it was. Yeah. Super 8, yeah. <laughs> Best actor, Christian Bale for Vice. Not very good. Bradley Cooper for Star is Born. So-so. Willem Dafoe. You didn't like that movie, Vice. Gate. What? You didn't like the movie, Vice. No. I wanted to see it. I, I thought it was terrible. It? I thought it was just absolutely terrible. Okay, uh, but they did to Cheney in that movie. No, it isn't a question of what they did to Cheney. <laughs> no, it's just that it just is such a it. You watch it and you say, "What's the purpose of this film?" You know, what's it trying to do? What's it trying to I accomplish? Like the, I like the promo on it. I thought it was very stylistic in the area. I just wanted to, but I, yeah, well, whatever. Well, you know, if you if you hate Cheney, then I suppose you'll like seeing them make fun of Cheney and Bush, but. But the, the, it's a one-dimensional picture that way. Plus, yeah. I like Christian Bale. I think he's a great actor. But apparently, the writing's not that great. So yeah. Um, uh, but you got, and then you got Rami Malek if, as Bohemian Rhapsody and Viggo Mortensen for Green Book. Lead actress uh, Yelitsa Arpaccio for Roma. She was terrific. Glenn Co- Close for The Wife, which my wife watched part of and said she couldn't stand it. Uh, Olivia Coleman is a very good actress in The Favorite, uh, but she is not my Lady Gaga for Stars Born, but she's not my choice. My choice is Melissa McCarthy in Can You Ever Forgive Me? She was just amazing. Just mm-hmm. amazing. This is what acting is about. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Yes, Ray. I, I have to say, I saw The Wife, and I have to completely disagree with Marjorie. Uh, Glenn Close was incredible in that movie. I, I started watching it. I don't remember where. It may have been Netflix or Showtime or something. Uh, and I thought it was very good. Uh, I didn't finish it. but uh, uh-huh. uh, Her <clears throat> acting was just, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to say it was the best movie in the world, but she was outstanding. Yeah. yeah. Did you, I did you I see yeah. like films that she's in. Yeah, I really? don't like Glenn Close either, but she, did it, she was doing Kidman. a very good job. Yeah. But Melissa uh, McCarthy. Nicole Kidman. Ma- I, Melissa McCarthy. I've always seen Nicole Kidman as uh, sort of, I don't know quite how to explain it, but sort of non emotional and one dimensional. Yeah. But, uh, I don't believe it. Anyway, uh, in supporting actor, Melissa McCarthy's terrific. Supporting actor, Mahersha Ali, Adam Driver for Black Klansman, eh. Sam Elliott, A Star is Born, okay. Richard Grant, uh, can, in Can You Ever Forgive Me, he was terrific. And Sam Rockwell in Vice, I'd probably, personally, I would give it to Richard E. Grant. Supporting actress, Amy Adams for Vice, uh, Marina de uh, Tavira for Roma, 
a Regina King for If Beale Street Could Talk, Emma Stone for The Favorite, and Ra Rachel Weisz for The Favorite. I think we did Emma Stone uh, for the SAG Awards on that category. Uh, best Director, Spike Lee for The Black Klansman, Hawaii, Pawankowski for Cold War, never heard of that. Yargos Lathimos for The Favorite, uh, Alfonso Caron for Roma and Adam McKay for Vice. I would give it personally myself to Alfonso Caron for, for Roma. Uh, what about Michael Snyder? Uh, he didn't get nominated. Um, <laughs> no, he does the reviews. Hey, for the best. Hey, Alex, uh, sorry. Uh, Melissa yeah, McCarthy got nominated for a Razzie as well. Uh, so I did Trump. For the same film. But no, not yeah, no, Trump. Yeah, not for the Trump, same film. Trump did too. Yeah, yeah uh, and so did uh, Kelly and Conway, yeah, and really? Melissa McCarthy. Anyway, the an <laughs> a best animated feature, Incredibles two, which was very good. Uh, Mar uh, Marai, Ma what is it? M Marai, I never heard of that. Ralph breaks the internet and Spider Man into the Spider Verse, but my favorite. And the one I want to see win is Isle of Dogs. If you have not seen it, it is a wonderful animated film by Wes Anderson. And if you get the title... It was here, but I didn't see it. Well, the, the title uh, is kind of a pun of sorts. Isle of Dogs, I Love Dogs, Isle of Dogs. Alex, you must have a lot of time to watch films. Well, we get them. You know. <laughs> hey, Bree, uh, are the films that we get here... Uh, are they adapted for the uh, audience in Dubai? Yes, so they, they cut out certain things? They do. Yeah, yeah. they're edited. Well, I mean, they what, do that in Singapore as well. In Singapore, they tell you what they're doing and why. Here they don't. It's just it's just cut. Like what, what some, it, films, it, uh, some films I've wanted my money back. Um, really? Yeah, like I made the mistake. Take, uh, well, in Singapore, I went. This was before they were telling you what, what, and why. But they they do it now, pretty much, if you want to. Uh, I saw Lust Caution, and I, I, I wanted my money back. But uh, the ones here in uh, Dubai, there are two that come to mind right away. Yeah. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. Which is a good film. And Entourage. Mm -hmm. Like I, like you could not understand them with the edits they made. It would have been better if they just said. But what no is? Thanks. What do we'll they remove? What case. do they remove? They the probably film? take out the sex, right? They take out a lot of things, and you you're never quite sure why. Uh, oh, there was another one that comes to mind. There was one called. Um, it starred the guy who is Jamie Lannister in uh, Game of Thrones, but he was in a movie called Gods of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But here they call it Kings of Egypt, and every time they say God or something like, they have to say King. Because you know, they can't say God. So, uh, but in Mad Max Fury Road, there's one scene where they they're they're driving to where they're supposed to get ultimately, mm -hmm. um, and the music is one way, and then it just automatically the music changes and you're in you're like you're in another scene. It's like what what happened? Like what? That's the penultimate scene in the film because they're spending most of the film getting there. What's there? You know. And later I watched it uh, in Germany. Uh, on on a DVD or something, and it was because I think there were naked bodies that were displayed as they entered this area or something. Well, you know what I and feel, how, how I feel about this? I, I blame the movie companies because if, if, if you have a movie and they say in Dubai, well, the only way you're going to be able to show it is if we make these edits, and you say, well, go ahead, we want to show our movie in Dubai, Mm -hmm. Well, the movie company should say, fuck you. You don't change anything about our movie. You either take it the way it is or we're not going to release it in your country. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. And, and, and then you, as a customer, don't get cheated. Yeah. You know, but. Well, I had another idea uh, for here. Mm -hmm. When I go into the grocery store, I can go into a pork section. It says for non-Muslims. And I have to push a button, and I can go in. I make the choice. I see the sign. I make the choice. So I, I feel that the movie should be the same way. They, they should just say, this movie is the edited version. This one is the unedited. If you go into the unedited, you have to sign your ticket, something yeah. like that. Or, or you know what you're you know, getting so. yourself into. 
Uh, right. Yeah. I don't think they're doing it to keep you protected. I think they're doing it to uh, foster their beliefs and that they don't uh, want the no, exposure. Think, they th believe it's blasphemy. Look, I, I think there's more to it than that, Phil. I think that it, it's a matter of control. No, you know? no, of customs. That when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And when in uh, Dubai, do as the Dubai people do. But if I were a movie and, and they had to edit my film like it was confetti, in order to show it in Dubai, I'm not going to go that far to get it shown in Dubai because I, that's not the film I made. Well, you know, the odd thing is, Alex, that um, in, in Dubai, mm -hmm. only about 10 to 12 percent of the population are actually locals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's like 88 percent of us who come from, you know, various areas. So I think it's, you know, it's a little difficult to... Uh, I mean, I, I can just watch it somewhere else, uh, and, I, and I've been exposed to all of that, so I don't know. But it is interesting because they will card kids. So if it's mm -hmm. PG-15, you have to be 15. They will card you. Mm -hmm. Well, the question is how much editing goes on in a film, say, in China. Uh, because the question here is, do you want to lose the Chinese market? It's such a huge market that you don't That's want right. to. So I think a lot of films are almost pre-censored when they're making them here, saying, well, this won't play well in China, so let's make sure we have an, a, an alternate take of this for the Chinese market. But when it You're comes right. to Dubai, you know, they're not gonna make a separate cut of a film for Dubai, it's too small a market. Yeah, so they might be doing it for the entire region. Yeah, yeah. So. Whatever yeah, the, the entire Middle East, you know. yeah. yeah. But I've noticed something that's a little peculiar, and that is that they didn't edit or ban a Bollywood film that uh, eventually caused controversy between the Muslims and and uh, Hindi. Uh, it was called Padmavat, and I got to watch that in all its full glory. Yeah. And um, and Tagalog movies, movies from Philippines, don't seem to be edited. You know, it's just the no. ones from Hollywood. Nobody understands what they're saying, except my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's, my wife. She's Filipina. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, one right now is called Marry Me, Marry. What was, what was a movie film years ago? The, the, uh, right the uh, Bad Lieutenant. Did you ever see that? Oh, oh yeah. Man. Harvey Keitel. <laughs> right. That's a well, great I movie. Well, I saw the movie, and I went, wow. I, I, and I was telling a girlfriend I had about it, and I said, this is a great movie. You got to see it. It was a low-budget film, and but it was said, a great. Well, you know. let, let's go down to Blockbuster and get the film. So, so, so we went to Blockbuster and got the film, and Blockbuster had edited. It would only take it in an edited version, and it may have been called the mildly bad lieutenant. I mean, it was just terrible. They had cut I, out I all the that. meaning of the film, everything, and this was Blockbuster doing this. They deserve to be out of out of business now. Yeah. They had like a pseudo Christian background a lot for for years, as I recall. So yeah, you know, par for the course. Yeah, it was terrible, just terrible. Did what you, they did, did you return all your tapes to Blockbuster? And, and or... I no, I went to, no, but I I went back to Blockbuster and I said, this is terrible. What you've done to this film? I said it's just horrid. I said you should at least offer an alternative version. You know, rather than your your edited version. And and they they said no. We this is the one we. Will only take here in in uh, uh, in Blockbuster. I went well, and that's the last time I'm ever going to get a film from Blockbuster because I don't know what I'm getting. Anyway, that kind of wraps it up uh, for our little uh, soiree tonight. Rob Alfano, thank you so much for calling. As for Phil Meyer, thank you as well. Ray Renati, uh, good to have you on. I don't know if he's still there or whether we're just getting his signal. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, there I am. I'm in the bathroom. Brian Ludwig, thank you so much. Jeff Stein, of course, we want to thank you. And Bree, uh, who's now a still frame, uh, thank you so much as well. Uh, it's been great tonight. It's been a nice night tonight. Just kind of copacetic. Anyway, everybody, uh, give a big wave goodbye to the folks out there in television land. Okay? Bye-bye. Okay, and that's our, uh, that's our uh, 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 panel for tonight. Uh, that's how they roll. That's how they do their thing. 
Uh, and I'm just signing out my uh, Skype here so that the next show, which is Jack Bishop and the Intersection, can use it. I'll be back again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, first of all, tomorrow evening, we start with uh, uh, the arena with the franchise MC, and then that's at 8.30 Eastern Time, and then 9.30 Eastern Time. Yes, it's Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. I'll be back again tomorrow night. 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.